Neil Armitage ran a surprisingly green farm over what was another dry summer in Hawke's Bay. The farm is not irrigated and uses a fraction of the fertiliser of other farms. Yet the cows are still producing more milk than the majority of farms in the region. Neil uses a farm management system known as biological farming. Biological farming is about getting the life in the soil to make that do the work. Once that happens, a lot of things just come together. Our clover content in the pastures has gone from about 5-10% in four years. It's now roughly sitting on about 30% clover. There's virtually no use of nitrogen. In the last 12 months we've only used six units at N, which is a big comeback of two to three hundred units. If you want to go and get the books, there's literally thousands of years of documentation on um, biological farming. It's just that we've chosen as farmers, or have been taught, to go down a different path. But that path isn't for me because it's not sustainable. 16 years ago we came here, bought it as a dairy conversion. We came with 350 cows and the whole idea was to milk 350 on one side of the farm and then have the other part of the farmers run off, but that all changed. We went up to 600 cows and we've been up to 800 cows. Now we've gone to an all year milking system. What got me interested in going down this track was we were doing good production on a conventional fertiliser programme system, but was always having too many animal health issues, lameness, infertility, having to use drugs. There was always something wrong with them. I always got told, I oh, will just put up with it because that's due to high production. But I knew somewhere that that wasn't true. It takes a couple of years to come off the chemical way, and then it's going to take the farmer two to four years to get his head around it. He'll see things happening and they'll be positive things, but most of the time you can't accept it because it's contrary to what we've been taught. Neil uses a service which tests soils, provides biological interpretation and suggests appropriate levels of fertiliser to apply. I guess the first thing I'd like to say is this is not organics takes into account all of the minerals and trace elements as you would under a conventional program, no difference at all, but we go much further than that. It's a case of we come on, we do a soil test and a herbage test. From those we can um, ascertain what the mineral balances are in the soil and what needs to be addressed, and also from the herbage what might be lacking there. And that's just as important from an animal health perspective as it is from a, a plant health. So if you have low copper or low iodine, it's pretty important to address that because that will put dollars in the farmer's pocket at the end of that year. So when we do an assessment, we put together an individual recipe for a farm. And really what it's about is working out where to spend the farmer's available dollars this year to put money in his pocket this year. Where can we get the biggest financial return? If we go on to any farm that's been under a conventional program, you can certainly be better than it is. You can improve it dramatically. You can improve the quality of the grass, the nutritional content of the grass. And if you can achieve that, you increase protein going off the farm. It's all about protein production. One of the visual things that you can see so obviously on a biological farm is when you part the grass, the pasture, and come down and have a look into the soil structure, the surface of the soil, you'll see there's very little leaf litter there. There's very little dead material that is just sitting there. What you're seeing here is that the microbial life is taking that material down into the soil, decomposing it, um, and making those nutrients available to the plant. But one of the big things it also does, it allows moisture penetration. There, there's the, the visual evidence that you can see there. The water goes in. Worms are the top end, they're the largest form of soil life that you can see. They're the ones we talk about because you can see them. The rest of them are too small to see with the naked eye. And, and that's why we do worm counts. They're a very good indication of what the rest of the life is like. If you have a large worm count, there's a good chance that the rest of the microbial life is also in a good health. Our organic matter in the last three to four years has increased quite substantially. 
If I want to introduce new grass species into our paddocks, we pretty much don't have to use a drill. We can just put the seed in the fert truck or we're actually putting it in the um, application of the fertiliser, the foliars. What we're noticing with the cow pats, within about 30 days, between about day 25, 35, I'd say 90% of the cow pats, or if not more, in lots of cases, have completely disappeared. The lower the bricks level, it's telling you the plant isn't functioning correctly. It can't get access to the minerals that it needs. When the bricks levels start rising, the plant gets healthier and it's more upright and you see um, a waxy sheen. It's like, you, you know it when you see it happening. Pests, we don't suffer too much of that around here. I think, just observing, we're getting even less and less of it now because the biology under the soil, the microbes, everything under there, actually start taking out like things like grass scrub and that. Uh, clover flea, well, supposedly it's supposed to get here, but we haven't seen it. There's no evidence of clover flea, but again, it's all to do with getting that bricks level as high as you can get it and taking the food away from them, so then they'll go to the next farm and take it away from there. 18 months ago we invested quite a bit more money than what most dairy farmers would into the effluent system. So what it involves is all the uh, effluent flows down into a, a big tank where it's continually stirred and then it's pumped up to two solid separators. And then once it's taken out the solids, it deposits that out and then it pumps the water into the effluent pond and then from the effluent pond it's pretty much water and then we can pump it up to a k and a half away. Currently at the moment we can do around about 80 to 90 hectares of effluent. The solids, we store it in something similar to a silage bunker and then we leave that to semi-compost itself and then after about six months it's gone cold and we spread it finely across the farm. It's to me it's green gold and that section of the farm we treat different we don't put any fertiliser on that part of the farm and we um, yearly monitor it, check what the um, NPK and everything's doing. We're much better prepared for dry times. We can last longer than most farms around us, so we'll still get dry for whatever, six, eight weeks, but we'll come out of it far, far faster and our dry is a lot shorter. And what we do find is you don't need a lot of rain when the rain comes, you know, an inch is any amount of rain to kickstart the farm off again. It sounds stupid, but it truly has brought a bit more fun back into farming. You're not forever chasing your tail, wondering why the grass grub's taking out this and that. And it's just more pleasurable, the cows are happier, they're more content. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a good way to farm. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.